What's going on, y'all? So um, what's going on, everybody? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> love at the lockup was a mess okay it was a cute little episode it really wasn't much um <clears throat> but one particular couple like to be quite honest i'm gonna be 100 percent. okay so this is love at the lockup season three life at the lockup uh, episode 28 inmates and play dates okay but most of the couples on this episode got on my nerves, all right? And I'm, like, kind of tired of seeing them because they keep on giving us the same BS. You know what I'm saying? But, baby, one of the couples on here, they on some foul shit. They are on some foul shit. And it's not just the uh, girl family would do you dirty. Why do you need enemies when you got family like that, bitch? Okay? Um. Anyway, so we start the episode off with, uh, what's that boy name? Sean and Destiny, okay? Sean pops up. Um, Destiny's sister Brittany outside, girl. Anyway, Destiny's sister Brittany outside. This what happens when you ain't got no shoulders. Destiny's sister, or you ain't got no chest. I ain't got no titties or nothing, so they just anyway. Um, <clears throat> flapjacks. Anyway, girl, a mess. J Destiny and Brittany and and, and John uh, Sean. Sean shows up. Brittany sitting outside, you know, trying to see if the girl going to show up. She annoyed that Sean is there. My whole thing is, why are you annoyed, okay? You know your sister doing some foul shit because y'all a family of goddamn scammers. That's what it is, okay? And, um, you know, Sean trying to understand what's going on and, you know, how she's seen Destiny. And as they talking, Destiny pulls up. Now, when Destiny pulls up, gets out the car, Sean pulls over and, um, parks in a different parking space and he gets out the car hey and she was like ain't this about a bitch and i was like yes it is but it ain't okay you fucking played that man all right let me just put this out here y'all already know shine ain't my favorite okay the man is dumb as a box of bricks okay He's dumb as a doorknob, you know what I'm saying? He's just real stupid, real gullible, real naive, all right? Very easy, easily to be taken advantage of, and we've seen that, okay? And it's just getting me, like, at this point, I'm like, whatever happens to him, happens to him. But at the same time, at the same time, he has every fucking right to be there, okay? With 50000 goddamn dollars on the goddamn line. Yes, I'm going to be there. So, bitch, you better suck it up. Suck it up and take your ass in the goddamn courtroom. That's what you're going to do. You better be glad I didn't call the cops on your ass my damn self and say that you stole my car and, and put a charge on your ass. That still probably would have fucked him up in the long run, but if she, he could have been vindictive and did some shit like that because technically that is what she did. She took his car, took his credit card, and used it in another state without his permission. Granted, he did give her the card. I don't know if he took it back or whatever, the logistics of it, but he could have faked it and said that she stole it and he had um already taken it back from her. He could have made some lies up or whatever. But the whole time, she giving all this attitude. You pissed off at the fact that he's still talking to his ex. I don't give a fuck, okay? That man got six kids with her, all right? So, of course, they're going to be in constant communication. He ain't fucking the bitch. He ain't fucking a bitch. And truth be told, the way Kelly be talking about that hoe and, and, and talking about Sean up in the comments, bitch, Kelly ain't fucking that man either. <laughs> okay? Truth be told, I don't know, Kelly. You probably would go and let him hit it. But, girl, how? But how you, how you put up? Was he really like this? Like, is that... Was he really this gullible when y'all was together? Or it's just old age that just came through and just, you know, knocked him off? You know, I just don't understand. Like, girl... Let us know, because you be in the comments sometimes. Let us know what's going on. But anyway, moving on from that, they get in the courtroom. Um, Destiny make it to court on time. You know, Sean and, and Brittany outside talking, speculating about what's happening or whatever. And once again, I'm like, Brittany, why are you feeling annoyed with Sean? Okay? If somebody did this shit to you, you would want to do be there too and want to know what the hell is going on. That man has every right to be there. That's what I don't understand. Like, y'all scamming bitches. Y'all just mad y'all getting caught, right? The little plan that you had in action is just not working the way that you thought it was going to work. That's what's going on with this situation. So, Destiny finally comes out and basically her case got pushed back to a later date due to COVID, okay? You know, and somebody had asked in the comments, was it in this video, last week's video? 
or somebody else's video, you know, like, I know they ain't doing all this, and some of the stuff was filmed prior to COVID, and some of this stuff was filmed during COVID. That's why sometimes you see them with masks, sometimes you don't in certain scenes, okay? But, um, yeah, and I'm just sitting here like, girl, she, you're doing this, and you lied about your age, and you lied about talking to your baby mama, and this is this. And the way that Destiny is going off, it's all because she wants to make an excuse to get out of the situation. That's what it is. So let me make, I'm really the villain in this situation, but let me make Sean the villain. The man that's been taking care of me and giving me any and everything that I want. Let me make him the villain so that I can feel good about the fact that I got found out that I'm playing this motherfucker. That's exactly what is going on, okay? Regardless of what your feelings are, that man was there for you, okay? And he put $50,000 on the fucking line for your eye, your ass sight unseen, okay? He hadn't even seen your ass in person, and he still blindly put that money down on line. And the least you can do is act fucking grateful, okay? And then Sean hit her with the, um, since you want to come at me about my thing or whatever, petty shit. Oh, you didn't tell me that you was 45, 46 years old. Okay, but when you found out, you still stuck it out with him. That was your opportunity once you found out to get the fuck out if you couldn't deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Granted, he shouldn't have lied about his age, but, you know, you still could have lied. When you found out that um he had six kids instead of the two that he said or whatever, you could have left. But you stayed because you liked being taken care of and you was playing the fucking con. That's all that it was, boo-boo. Okay? And then Sean said, well, bitch, since you want to hit me with some petty-ass shit, let's talk about the men that I found on your fucking Facebook that I didn't even know that you had and um the fact that you was fucking engaged to him. So was I just a pawn? This, just, just, just me, you playing me or whatever? She was like, you're a fucking trick. Just get over it. I said, well, shit, bitch, since you didn't put it that way, okay? The whole time, Sean is like, this is not how somebody's supposed to act when they're fiancés. I said, bitch, Sean, wake the fuck up. Now, bitch, sometimes I be trying to go for you, but you just so stupid I can't be on your side 100%. Damn, wake up. She was playing your ass, okay? But that was Sean and um, goddamn Lacey. Oh, wrong person, Destiny. <clears throat> Moving on to... Quaylin and Chevelle. Okay, let me tell you something. For some reason, I think I just like Quaylin and um them or whatever, just because I like I know it's gonna be some fuck shit that's gonna go down because I wanna know what the cops was there for. And I think I just like saying his name the way that I say his name. I think that's what it is. But basically, he at the thing and you know, him and Chevelle sitting there talking and having a conversation about what's gonna go go down. And of course she was like on the one hand, I'm looking at him, and when I see him, I get all these butterflies inside of me or whatever. But then on the other hand, it's like, damn, like, can I really trust you? Like, you was really foul for what you really fucking did to me. Like, that was really messed up, and I really don't want to go through that shit or whatever. But I do miss him because I love him. That's what the emotions that Chevelle was going through, which I already told us that she was going to be back with that nigga, okay? That's all that it was. You know... Quaylin has a charming quality about him, and that's probably why, you know, I kind of gravitate towards him, but I already know he's a fuck boy, okay? In 9 out of 10s, he's going to fuck up again, okay? And bitch, if it happens, it happens, and Qua uh, Chevelle probably going to take him back again again, you know what I'm saying? It it's that ever, um, never in this cycle, all right? But, you know... He is sitting down, he tried to apologize, and, you know, she telling him how she feels and all this stuff about the situation. Girl, when Lil Maila came over there and said, first of all, mama, you put me on them goddamn go-karts and them ain't even for my size, okay? I'm a big kid. He was like, you know, I know little kid. I don't even like when people call me that, okay? Don't call me that. Girl... First of all, I said, little mama said what she said. Don't call her no little kid. She ain't no little baby or whatever. She is a toddler. She said, bitch, I'm about to be six years old, okay? Grow the fuck up and get it right. I was like, oh, all right. You know, mama was giving a lot of attitude, okay? And, you know, of course, they love buying. You know, you ain't even say nothing to me when I came over here and he played with her and all that stuff. You know, after Quaylin get through talking about the stuff that they had to talk about, Quaylin and Chevelle, you know, they talked about whatever they had to talk about. What I really want to get to is the fact that Chevelle went over there to D-Mark. D-Mark was like, so what's going on? Why is he here? Why is he here? D-Mark, anybody in the Chevelle camp, in the Quaylin camp, let D-Mark see this, okay? I understand that, and I said this last week. I understand that you um know how these niggas work, but everybody ain't you, okay? 
and you are on here acting like a jealous boyfriend to your cousin. Now, I heard a kissing cousin, and I heard some people that be, you know, marrying their first cousin and be doing playing off with their first cousins and, you know, their cousin cousins and doing all this other stuff. I ain't trying to imply that that's what y'all had going on when y'all was growing up, but you are acting like you her man and you were jealous or you want to get with your cousin because you putting a little bit too much energy into a relationship that's not yours, okay? What about all the stuff that you said to me or whatever before we got down here? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't finna accept dude, okay? You know, I can fight. I can fight. I ain't got no problem taking him out. And I'm sitting here like, why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Why is this affecting you so much? I just don't understand it. I understand that you don't want to see your family member get hurt. But again, that's not your relationship, okay? We can talk all the shit about our niggas and all our, our, our women or whatever and be pissed off in the moment or whatever. But when that nigga or that woman come back, okay, and we actually sit down and have a conversation, it's up to us whether or not we want to take them back or not. It's not up to you, okay? And then he going to tell him, you know, I know she ain't going to pick you. I know that this going to be good because it's blood over anything. Bitch, she went right back with the nigga. Okay, blood my ass. All right, you know, and I understand. I understand you trying to be protective, but you doing too much. Okay, you acting like her daddy and her long lost lover. Like, I don't like it. It seems weird. It's suspect, bro. Okay, the way that you getting so fucking hype. Like, bitch, go out there and get you a bitch. Okay, you ain't got no bitch to fuck on and to love on and to put all that energy into. Like, D-Mark, real talk, you give me abuse teas. Okay, I don't want to put that on you. I don't want to put that on you, but you giving me those teas like you doing a little bit too much, okay? Calm the fuck down. You getting mad like you ready to fight this man because of what? He cheated. You cheated on bitches too. So what? You can do it, but he can't do it. Like, it, 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 girl, boy, shut the fuck up. I mean, you're not supposed to do it in the first place, but like somebody else, brother uh, or, or father, whatever, came at you the way that you coming at him. I want to know that. I want to know that. Because you're doing the absolute fucking most. Let them do their own shit. And I understand she came to you with the issues, but you kind of inserted yourself too into the problem as well. Okay? But, you know, she allowed it. But let her do what she going to do. Okay? You should know that this was going to happen. Moving on from that, we get to um, Puppy and Amber. Girl, Puppy and Amber, a mess. A mess. Um... Amber had to let us know, no, Puppy had to let us know about the fact that, you know, when you're in jail, most of the time, because she never really been with a woman outside of jail, she got with women when she was in prison, you know, and it was like a lot of women are gay for us uh, to stay, you know what I'm saying? They get into these deep relationships, and she said these relationships are different from outside world than it is in the inside world in a sense that in the inside you are with this person 24-7, so you can't help but see them. So you get to talk to them all the time. And, you know, they get to telling you everything. And it gets real deep. And especially the fact that you're women, okay? Us women, we are emotional people. And we are sensitive sometimes, some of us. And, you know, we get to that deep, deep aspect. We like to go deep into stuff, okay? That's why, especially when um they call us you haul like... Bitch, feelings start coming out two weeks into the relationship, and next thing you know, we marry in the third week. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like that. It'd be like that, and we'll be together for years. We'll be together for years, whether it's off or on, bitch. We'll be together for years, okay? Um, <clears throat> but she up there having a conversation with Amber. I said, girl, this ain't gonna work in your favor. You know what I'm saying? You know, I understand how you feel, and it's just like. Let me tell you something. I don't know if Amber, I mean, Puppy has necessarily came out and said that she's a lesbian now, but she probably bisexual and she just really in love with Puppy, I mean, Amber at this point. That's what it is, okay? And my thing of it is, baby, there is nothing worse for a lesbian or a bisexual woman to be crushing, to have feelings for, or to fall in love with a straight woman. That is something that you should not experience because baby, it's gonna fuck you 
up because you thinking that maybe maybe if i get close to her they see how i'm good with them or whatever i could be their friend i could be their homie and i could be their lover on top of that they can give me a chance but most times sometimes it'll work out most times it won't and you are the one the lesbian the bisexual you are the one that gets your feelings hurt okay because it doesn't work out the way that you want or you probably do get to have sex with the girl and you probably want more and that straight girl don't want that more. She just wanted to test out what it was, you know what I'm saying, and go back to her nigga, okay? Don't fall in love with a straight bitch. And that is exactly what Puppy did with Amber, okay? Amber is not gay. I'm looking at it now. Maybe she is. I think she bisexual. She's just not ready. Or don't fall in love with somebody that's in the closet, okay? Because And then get mad when they don't come out the closet the way that you want them to, when you want them to, okay? Amber is not ready to come out yet. That's all that it is. All that, if you got to get drunk, baby, let's not talk about drunks and drugs and stuff like that. If you got to get drunk and all that stuff to loosen up, to have sex with somebody, you ain't supposed to be with that person. You are not supposed to be with that person on that type of level, okay? And that is exactly what Amber is doing, you know, with Puppy or whatever. You know, she had to go to the club. She had to get drunk to do all that kissing and grinding and shit. I was very uncomfortable doing them scenes and shit like that. But I'm like, baby, this ain't gonna work. This ain't gonna work, okay? Puppy, I need you. I know that's your friend, and I know you got feelings, but this is not gonna work, and you kind of like... You know, she's giving you the signs that it's not going to work. She won't answer the questions the way that you want her to, too. you know. She's putting it off. And plus, Amber is still in love with her first or whoever her ex was named Sammy, who went back to jail and he about to get out, bitch. I said, oh, shit, bitch. Girl, puppy, I feel so sorry for you, baby girl. She was laying in that bed looking like a sick puppy, okay? She literally was looking like a sick puppy. I said, damn, bitch. Did y'all really fuck? Like, girl, they giving me teens. Like, I don't think they ever had sex sex. But I, I don't know. I don't know. It giving me teens like when they was up in prison or whatever. Amber used to let her finger hurt. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's what it's giving me feelings and not penetrate. Y'all saw my fingers go up. Not penetrate. Um, first of all, for my lesbians that watching this or my bisexual women that watch this and been with women or whatever, and y'all be doing y'all girl, no, when y'all don't use toys or whatever, answer me this, riddle me this, bitch. Do y'all use these two fingers or do you use these two fingers? Bitch, it's uncomfortable using these two, okay? When I see people doing that, I was like, that's uncomfortable and all. This, girl, I, I go to town with these. Anyway, um... <laughs> Wrong video. But yeah, puppy, let that shit go. You finna get your heart broken, okay? Amber finna go back to her nigga, okay? That's what she finna go back to her man. And, and you gonna be sitting there probably gonna put Amber back in jail. Because y'all probably gonna get into a fight and y'all both asses gonna go back to jail because of it. Stop that shit, okay? But um, moving on from that, she was like, I'm about to get ready to go to work. Uh, so you gonna be here when I come back? You gonna come back home? Yeah, I'm coming back home. Where the fuck I'm going? <laughs> said damn puppy you know make me kind of sad then we get to sarah and michael oh my goodness sarah michael and goddamn malcolm okay let me tell you something malcolm you did the right thing at this point at this point like bitch it just wouldn't be me so sarah is at the house getting ready michael has been there for a couple of weeks okay i said a couple of weeks bitch you know at this point, Michael's so filling it up in his spirit that, you know, he's so cocky and so narcissistic and egotistical at this point. He really think he big dumb daughter, like he really that nigga, you know what I'm saying? She finna go on a play date with her play boyfriend or whatever. And I was like, see, I knew it. you want to say that you're not jealous, but you're acting very much jealous or insecure a little bit. But you know, at the end of the day, also, he knows that Sarah will get back with him if she wants to, if he was to ask her to, okay? Okay, he, she would jump on that dick in a minute. And she claims that they ain't had sex that whole time that they was there. I don't believe it, but that's what she said. Okay, um, because things are a little bit too calm between them two. But at the same time, you know, she go out to the, on a date with Malcolm, right? It looked like they was having a little brunch or some shit. Y'all saw that big-ass plate of spaghetti he had? I said, damn, nigga. Okay, plus you had a big salad, too? Ugh. 
oh my gosh, you're gonna be shitting bricks. But anyway, um, you know, so they sitting down there talking or whatever, and Sarah's whole thing is she don't know how she's gonna approach the situation and bring up the topic of the fact that Malcolm does not know that Mike Michael is staying at the house with her, okay? And so, you know, at this point, she was thinking about how to bring it up. I don't even know what she really wanted to bring. She didn't really want to bring it up at that moment because they was having such a good time. They was vibing out and everything, catching up on what was happening and shit like that. Next thing you know, here come uh, Michael at the most inconvenient time, right on time. Ding, 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 ding. She was like, hello. He was like, yo, where you at? She was like, I'm on a date. Okay, like I said, where you at? Bye, Michael. And I said, oh, my God, bitch. First of all, why you put that hoe on speakerphone? You knew exactly what you was doing. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if they say put the shit on speakerphone. You knew what you was doing. And the producers, if y'all told her to put that shit on speakerphone, you messy too, okay? You fucked that date up too, okay? I'm putting that all on y'all because had, um, you know, Malcolm not heard the conversation, he wouldn't have brought up Michael, okay? Or if she had not, she, she could have been like, ugh, bye. She ain't have to say Michael or whatever, you know. And he could have been like, babe, who was that? And she was like, oh, no, it was nobody. It was my cousin or something like that. She could have lied and played it off like that. But no, we had to be honest up in this bitch and say it was Michael. <laughs> Look at my ass. <laughs> She had to be honest up in this bitch and say it was Michael, okay? And so she said it was Michael. And um, Malcolm was like, so what's the situation with that? So I know, you know, the last time we seen each other, we got into a little heated conversation, but then we got back and we actually sat down and had a conversation. I invited him to come to the house to come stay for like a couple of weeks or whatever. I mean, he not sleeping in the same room with me or whatever, but, you know, every the situation has been calmed down. Malcolm heard... Baby daddy that's been giving you a whole bunch of drama, a whole bunch of mess that you've been telling me all these issues about and the stuff that you just got into it with him with. Now you have him staying at your house and y'all been fucking on and off and you want me to be okay with the fact that you got this man in your house. That's all that he heard, okay? And I understand exactly where Michael is coming from in his reaction. It's not about being insecure. It's not about, you know, being jealous or anything like that. It's just that... She's not ready to move on. She wants to claim that she's ready to move on. She's not ready to move on. And see, one thing Ashley don't do, Ashley don't do that baby mama, baby daddy drama shit, and Ashley don't do that ex shit. If you got ex drama or whatever, don't get into a relationship with somebody when you are not all the way together and you are not all the way ready because you are fucking up their time and wasting their time, okay? You're going to end up messing up the relationship and losing somebody that could have been really good for you because you weren't ready and you're wasting that time because you're still dealing with that mess. That's what it is, okay? And that's exactly what happened with Sarah and Malcolm. Malcolm said, at the end of the day, I like you. I like where this was heading. But at this point, everything was cool until this nigga started coming back. And I seen what it's doing because he's a man and he understands. And he also probably probably did it himself before. And now the shit is coming home to roost. Um... He was like, once you figure that shit out, you can give me a call. But other than that, I'm going to remove myself from the situation because I'm not about to be a fucking third wheel. He said, um, deuces. He got up and said goodbye. She said, well, thanks for everything. And he left her with the bill. <laughs> he said, bitch, that's the least you can do. You getting paid from this goddamn show. You can pay the goddamn bill. <laughs> I spent all this amount of money to drive down here four hours to meet your ass, bitch. The least you could do is pay the bill after you done told me that you got your baby daddy up in the house with you. And thinking that I'm going to be cool with it, please. Because like he said, eventually they're going to fart fucking. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay? I said, Malcolm, I told you you should have got out that situation. Meanwhile, we go over there to John and Christiana. We ain't seen them in a minute. Okay? Because Christiana is in jail. Christiana been in jail at this point for the past nine months. She done got clean. She done gained like 35 pounds. She on the phone with John, you know, talking to Magic. John got her on speakerphone because the mama's still staying at his house. The uh, sister's still staying at his house. So they all there listening to her. You know, this one big group call. She was like, baby, I can't wait to get out to suck your dick. And uh, I was like, damn, right in front of the mama, huh? <laughs> but what's not, that's not tea right there. It's not even Christiana. Christiana said, bitch, I might be getting out in a month, okay? He was like, cool. 
We find out next week that she getting out earlier than that. Okay. But, um, who needs enemies when you have family and a sister like Christiana? Okay. Now, when the scene first came on with John, John was leaning in the bed with his shirt off, looking at a magazine or whatever. And Tara, her goddamn sister, whatever the fuck her name is, she come up in there, okay, in a towel. Like, she just came up out the shower talking about some, did you see my phone? You got my phone? This my phone right here? Get up. Pinching all on his butt and everything. I'm sitting here like, oh, my God, what is going on? He ain't got no shirt on. You up in the bathroom. All he got to do is go like this or you go like this. Oops. <laughs> my towel dropped. <laughs> All you had to do some shit like that, bitch. Okay, what is going on? I said, uh-uh. No, what is happening? They fucking already. You know, John had to make it clear. I am married. I'm married to Christiana. Okay, that is my wife. I can't commit adultery because, you know, the marriage would be null and void in the native, you know, religion that they, uh, the way ceremony that they did it. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, he keeping strong to it, but he said, I don't know what exactly going on between me and Tara, but it's something that is a little deaf, but I ain't trying to touch that shit. Later on in the episode, when we see them again, Tara going to get cross straddled this motherfucker and try to kiss this man. He was like, bitch, I'm with your sister. And I said, you sure y'all ain't going to fuck? And I feel like they probably is or almost. She was like, this ain't the first time that we almost kissed. He was like, she gonna say something, you love me, you love me. And he was like, I know he want me. I said, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And here I am, girl. Anyway, anyway, a mess. I said some bullshit. Tara, whatever the fuck your name is, Christiana needs to beat your ass, okay? I hope she see this, and I hope she see how much of a snake you are. You literally cried with her when she got out of jail the first time and when she had to go back. You sat there and cried. No wonder why you was edging for her to go to back to jail. Because your bitch, was the, your bitch ass was the one that said, listen, you need to go back to jail, okay? And if you don't wake up and go turn yourself in, I'm going to call the people myself. She said that. Go back to the season when she said that early on in the season. In the regular love after lock up. And now I see why. You was trying to get her man this whole time. You's a scandalous, dirty dog. Anyway, that was love after lock up, life after lock up. Y'all tell me how y'all feel. And I will see y'all later for Bell Collective. Peace.